Hi guys, and uh, welcome to part two of my uh, review of the Fitech WG wearable gimbal. Uh, in part one, I discussed various issues, pros and cons um, with it, and uh, promised to get back to you with some modifications that I thought were basically essential. Um, well, time has passed. Uh, I've, I've handed it over to the manufacturing division. Uh, that's my dad. Um, and he's uh, come back with the modifications. It proved to be a lot more tricky than was initially anticipated. Um, in the part one, I uh, showed um, various well, this this is the original uh, design they had. Um, there was a relatively simple modification that was discussed, um, but and and promoted by a, another um, YouTuber. Um, however, that really didn't stack up. Um, first of all, I'll show you what the solution um, actually came up with, um, which I think you'll see is considerably more complicated. Um, than the the original uh, proposal. Basically, the original proposal um, was to essentially drill some holes in the back of the uh, the original um, case and screw it onto the the original uh, frame on the back, which while simple um, was quite fragile. Uh, it has got a couple of screws going into some, through some plastic and. It, you, no, I was I wasn't happy with it. Um, and uh, secondly, um, when we actually tried to mount this on on a, on a, on a custom-made frame, that you can see at the back here, um, it proved to be it didn't balance basically, and the unit vibrated absolutely crazily. Um, it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. Uh, there's no way you could have used it. It's actually telling in the video the other guy did, he didn't have any sound. Um, and I'm wondering whether that's because it was buzzing like crazy. Uh, I don't know, I, maybe it didn't have the problem, but um, we certainly did and it wasn't feasible. So what we had to do is after uh, machining a uh, little extra sort of tray soak frame thing here on the back um, and attaching it to the original gimbal uh, mounts, which if you can see that there, um, that is that is where the original screws go onto the gimbal. This is all completely removable. This is the gimbal is totally stock when you when you just take these off. Um, but between there's a clamp here going over the the arm um, with a weight on the end of it, and another weight on the back of this frame, which we move left and right in order to trim the gimbal so it's basically inert because you can see this is turned off this is actually powered off this gimbal um, and you can see it just sits parallel naturally um, this basically does two things first of all it stops the crazy hunting motor noise and everything um, though there are still problems we'll get on to that in a minute um, uh, but it also will doubtless reduce greatly reduce the amount of power required because essentially, without these weights on, the gimbal just to stay completely stationary like this with no effort whatsoever, nothing going on, no movement, it'd be using quite a lot of power to run the motors. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it turned out to be necessary. I'm not going to pretend this is easy. Um, it sure as hell wasn't. He's a talented mechanical engineer uh, and camera specialist um, and just about nobody else is going to have this kind of backup so I'm very grateful to him but um, you, you're all, unless you have a very unusual workshop um, you are going to have a very tough time making this thing um, this 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 is a, uh, made of um, an aluminium alloy on the back here um, and it's being folded up on the edges to give it extra strength uh, the I've put an extra uh, different back door on I, I bought a floaty um, off the internet and they come with uh, spare back doors I drilled and um, uh, well, he drilled and um, put this plate on the back um, and he's put this bar in um, which is a weight that can be movable so you can use a little grub screw that you undo which then move the weight left and right in order to um, trim the weight. Um, in addition, this weight on the end here, which screws onto this plate which clamps onto the original arrangement, that um, itself is screws in and out so you can have a bit of fine tuning there as well. So um, yeah, 
tricky, basically. Um, so it does now work, and I can demonstrate this with it turned on. So this is with a full housing, with a battery and everything in there. I turn it on. There you go, powered up. And we're off. And it's pretty good, basically. It's it's motion-wise, um, all good. The weight, by the way, before I forget, um, the one on the end is about 30 grams, and the one on the back is about 20. Um, but yeah, good luck with the rest of the machining. <laughs> you can you can probably figure that bit out if you can do the rest of it. You can figure that bit out. Um, it was really vibrating very very badly without it, so I don't really risk, think it's realistic. Um, but this is this is now working very well. The problem is basically the sound is a write off. There's no two ways about it. You don't you, you don't want the sound. The, 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 the sounds coming out as in all GoPro levels of sound, um, but there's a high pitched whine on the on, on the audio. Uh, I think it's probably due to the fact that the motor here is right next to the mic, uh, which is just inside there, and it may even be an induction problem in terms of the the, the motors producing a magnetic field which the microphone's picking up. Um, and there's just nothing I'm going to be able to do about that. Um, external mic, maybe, um, because you've got the, the ports over here, uh, on, on the, sorry, on the side here. Um, so that might be possible. Um, but once you start having trailing wires coming out, uh, problems. Um, if you do a Bluetooth solution, I don't even know if it supports a Bluetooth solution, but if you do that, you're going to be cutting battery life massively. Um, so pff, yeah, it's, it's not great basically. Um, if for situations where you're doing time lapse and speeding things up, we don't get any, um, audio anyway. And for things like a lot of the, a lot of the videos with the skiing and the mountain biking, people put a soundtrack in the background. So brilliant. No problem. Um, just don't expect to get the, the, the audio out of it. Um, because there's a horrible high pitch whine and I'll, I'll, put a, a, a short uh, video I've done at the desk here um, with that on you can see just how irritating it is and it's really that isn't present in the normal video I have to say that without before the modifications um, there is no wine um, well I say no wine very occasionally you might get the hint of something this is now intolerably loud and constant um, it's totally inaudible to the human ear here now um, unless you can pick up on the mic I don't know if you can but um, yeah, it's it's it is what it is. Uh, that's how, that's basically as good as we can get it. And I think with these um, gim this gimbal setup, this is basically as you're gonna good as you're gonna get it. Um, so the video looks like it's gonna be pretty good. Um, I can show that there. I mean, yes, you've got some more restrictions here now. Um, so if I turn it around here, so you can maybe see a bit better. When I turn like that, if I turn really hard, you can hear it hit. Um, that's hitting a little earlier, um, but it's it's probably good enough for what I need it for. Um, it's mainly going to be vertical um, bouncing like this, um, and that'll be good with some side in. Uh, it might be putting some um, padding or something on might help, but. Largely, I think that's probably as, as, as far as we're going to go. Another good thing about this design, as opposed to the original one, is that you can now open the um, the top very easily, just as a normal GoPro camera um, mount. Uh, if I just undo that, um, and just empty the camera out like that, so it's seconds to remove it and change the battery, um, and yeah, go and plug it in to, to remove the the film, uh, the film, the, the video. <laughs> Um, and it's the same again to put it back in. So I'm not saying you can do this with gloves on or something, but it's a lot more practical basically. Um, so you just latch it on and it's in and done. It's that quick and that easy versus fiddly, fiddly grub screws you had to undo, um, which just wasn't very practical. So that's, that's another, another benefit of that design. Um, and it keeps the, uh, the lens close to the, the center of the, uh, the gimbals, which yeah, probably helps with stabilisation, we'll we'll find out in due course. Now knowing how difficult this is, um, 
I would possibly propose as alternative completely left field solution. Uh, forget about the GoPro, buy a cheap um, camera, Chinese knockoff camera, they're getting very good apparently, um, and treat it as a disposable camera. Um, if you can pick one up for about 35 quid, I believe I've seen them new on the market for, um, it might be just worth it doing it that way. Um, realistically, if you are looking for a solution um, and you don't have the engineering backup that I'm very lucky to have available, um, you are unlikely to be able to come up with something uh, this good. You might get lucky, the other guy might have been lucky, and I don't know, maybe his gimbal's more forgiving, um, but I think probably he was having trouble, but he didn't mention it um, because it was very noticeable. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would probably pursue going down the avenue of just leaving the bare cheap camera on the gimbal um, and not putting your several hundred pounds worth of GoPro bare on the front so that when you face plant into the floor or something and you scratch the lens, you're not going to be heartbroken. If it's a £35 camera, okay, annoying, but no big deal. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a shame because with just a little bit extra you know it, it would be yeah if they if they'd actually just gone and done what i've done here as out of the box um it's entirely it's, it's easy if you're manufacturing in the first place they could have even just offset the gimp uh, offset the uh, the centers on the axes on this thing um and it would have not needed the counterbalancing you could have just done it in the manufacturing and it would have been fine um the software could have been better that would have made it fine as well but it's not so i don't know if i'd say it, knowing now how much effort we had to put in to make this thing work was it worth it well i'll see what footage i'll get out of it um we've got it now we've done it so yeah that's where we are so i'll, I'll post some footage on on this um and then i'll post some real footage off the slopes or off the mountain bike or something and uh, just see how it goes um so watch out for number three thank you very much bye